Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Today I'm going to be unboxing $4,000 of GPUs, or at least it would have been $4,000 back when these launched in 2007. Uh, interesting fact, these cards were launched five days before my birthday, uh, the, the actual day I was born. So that makes it a bit more interesting. I've torn off all of the labels that have my address because I prefer that people didn't really know where I live. Oh, looks like it's pretty well packaged. I apologize, I can't put my camera any higher and the box won't fit on uh, the, the camera in a couple parts of the video probably. But it'll be gone soon if I can get this tape off. There we go. Probably should have picked a better opening device. Wow. Overpackaged much? Wow, these things are kind of heavy. I guess just because of how dense they are, for some reason each of these cards feel like they weigh more than the, the whole box did. So I'll take them one at a time from here, and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Here we go, we'll need these. Oh. These scissors are so good that it opened without me even touching it with the scissors. Wow. I'm just that strong. I can cut things without touching them. I kind of wish they'd used uh, anti-static, but it'll probably be fine. Wow. All right then. Alright, I'll get this little label off here. Alright guys, welcome to my unboxing of the NVIDIA Cadro. Seller said they were working, despite them uh, not being in, you know, A-plus physical condition, which is fine for me. I mean, they're going inside a... how? They're going inside a computer anyway. Who cares how they look? And the cards are slightly different. One's probably like a Dell OEM and one's probably like an HP OEM. Because those are the two main companies that you're going to see Quadros from. Because these are no lowly GeForce cards. No, they are not. These are... these are the highest bend of the of the GPUs. Alright, here we go. We've got two quadros now. That's interesting. Oh no, the pin just broke. Okay, so that's why that's missing, because the pin is broken. That's unfortunate. I might be able to resolder it, but I might not. Still got the one on the other side. I think it might still work. Anyway, um, despite that unfortunate occurrence, here we go. $4,000 when they were new. Uh, each of them was 2000 These are the FX 4600s. So they're basically an... It's, it's between the 8800 GTS and GTX, I believe. Uh, it's between two 8800 series, like, cards, because it has more ROPs than the lower end one, but fewer, like, shaders than the higher end one, I believe. So, it's kind of a strange middle-of-the-road thing, but you can actually get these cheaper than you can get a lot of those cards. That's a cool thing about older Quadros, 
because it's essentially just a GeForce card with a slightly different cooler and a different BIOS. All right, let's uh, let's test these out. I'm really interested to see how it how it does. Okay, please excuse the mess. I was going to test it in a different system, but it didn't want to work. So I am testing it in this PC build here that was going to replace my workstation, but didn't because it didn't work. So, um, well, well this will be good because it has the Z on and it somewhat works. Wow, the, uh, the end of this card is just absolutely destroyed. Like, what did they do to this poor thing? Like, even the DVI connector, it's like bent and broken. I gotta bend the bracket out so that I can put it in. So the first one I'm gonna test is the one that doesn't have that, like, broken slot connector. But looks like it got dropped off a building. I think the one without the broken slot connector is a bit more likely to work. Oh, and the, uh, the six pin is in a pretty inconvenient place. It took me a little while to find it. It's, it's hidden back here. All right, here goes. Well, it's not happy with being curb stopped. The fan works just fine. Just fine. Okay, drain the residual power and then I'll take it out of the slot. Oh, that's loose. That just fell out of the slot, okay. I wanna see if it's like a physical fit problem. Because if, it, if the problem is that it won't fit all the way into the slot because of the case blocking the like bent broken part, I could try using a riser cable, and this is a PCIe 1.0 card, so it doesn't need very much bandwidth at all. It's only twice the speed of PCI, uh, PCIe 1.0 16x. Here, I'll, I'll put it on this box here. You may or may not see a video about this soon. I'm not sure. It's not been going too well. I'll have to restrict basically all airflow to the card which is kind of what would have happened in an SLI setup with this card anyway. It won't even screw into the right DVI, uh... Oh, oh, the port is, like, loose. Okay, that's, that's fun. Okay, this is a sad way for a $2,000 card to die. It's a bomb. Yep, it might be gone. Well, that sucks. That really sucks. Because, like, I was really looking forward to testing these. I want to get at least one working one. Now I'm glad I bought two. Where did that go? fan wraps up. Oh! Oh, this one works! Let's go! Now we just gotta wait for the monitor to warm up. Okay, good. It does work. Um, I haven't put this boot drive in this system before, so Windows is gonna go through its usual oh no kind of thing. But I'm so glad we got at least one working card. Uh, then I'm going to do a teardown of this one probably. 
Now there are Windows 10 drivers for these things. As there are Windows 10 drivers for 8000 series GPUs, the GeForce cards. So yeah, I'd say they're really well supported. Alright, here we go. Gonna install driver release 342.00 from 2016, which seems uh, really late for this to be released, actually. Where's the... Ah, uh, there it is. It seems really late for it to be released for such an old card, so I'm glad they supported it for so long. I mean, 10 years is pretty solid. And this would have been very irrelevant in 10 years because pro cards get replaced probably even faster than gaming cards, except for in certain applications where it just works. Like if you're doing live video, I could imagine one of these lasting you 10 years or more, but if you're doing intense 3D modeling, it'll probably only last you like two, three, four. Not because it breaks, but because it you, you just need something better. And then also I made, what I'm gonna be using to test it is I made a tiny little version of it in Cinema 4D. And I wanna see like how smoothly it runs it. And then I might do some old benchmarks. Because why not? Okay, whatever NVIDIA WMI was, it didn't go well. But we'll try... I mean, the card seems to work. I'm going to open Harbor Info 64 and just check on it. Also, I'm really sorry. There's not a way to get it running at 60 hertz as far as I know. Which uh, sucks. Also, the smell coming out of this card is quite interesting. It's starting to heat up a bit. Now that the driver is installed and it's doing 3D acceleration instead of just offloading it to the beast of a CPU. Oh, hey, FX4600, it's... Okay, good. So it's... It's still recognizing that it's running at X16. Uh, X16. Uh, yeah, it's got the 768 megs. Are you kidding? Does it not work? I'll do a quick viewport render. Oh yeah, I don't have the correct texture on this computer, so it, it won't load that texture. But th this is what it's supposed to look like. There's supposed to be a 3D model that I can interact with before rendering it. But there just isn't. It went to get milk. Also, I made this before I actually had the card, so it's not completely accurate. Like, like, I don't think I made the heatsink long enough. But it's a graphics driver thing with Cinema 4D, where if it doesn't recognize your graphics driver, it just won't run. And it won't actually display an image. So that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm gonna get those benchmarks. We'll just start with the recommended settings and see how it does. This is a demo from 07. All right. 2976. If anyone knows what an 8800 GTS or GTX would get in terms of score, it would be interesting to compare. So if you have one of these cards, uh, let me know in the comments. Oh, I should have had a GPU-Z up so that I could be checking temps. Let's see what temperatures it's running at. Uh, the fan is not very loud at all. Oh yeah, not bad. So you've got two GPU temp sensors and a PCB temperature. Okay, cool. So then I'll do Tropics. We're getting quite the decent frame rate, just on the default settings. 1199. 
It's got quite the coil wind to it, though, which is funny. Wow! It never went above 64 degrees, and I guess it literally has one GPU clock setting. Alright. <laughs> Time to melt it, I guess. I think it supports DX10. Yeah, here we go, boys. So the score is what, like 11 something that we're trying to beat? Well, we won't beat it. We're seeing how, how much we can just tank the performance. Okay, it's, it's actually still doing all right, wow. I'd love to know the story of this card. Like, like not the card in general, but this specific one that I own. I wonder where it was previously used, because it's obviously pretty well loved. It's got some dust on the heatsink. Not to mention this one, which looks like someone just spilled a whole thing of thermal paste on it. Okay, so our score is like... Uh, about two-thirds of what it was if when I completely maxed it out, which is just impressive. Wow. Uh, I did not expect it to do that well. But that is it for this video. I gotta take it out to take some pictures for the eBay seller uh, of that missing pin. But I'm satisfied that I got a working card. I'm really glad that I got a working card. Uh, again, if I can keep the broken one, I will do a teardown video, but yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching, and see you next time.